I've had a number of engineers come up to me and ask how they could excel, you know, in terms of supervising on site, how they could be confident on site, how they could make sure they were doing the right thing on site. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to share with you um, duties of a site engineer or a resident engineer when they are on site. This is a two part series. So in this first uh, uh, part, I'll share with you some of the some of the duties that I expected of you to do when you are a site engineer or a resident engineer. I hope this video will help you uh, scale up, will help you be more confident and be clear on what is expected of you on during site supervision. Enjoy. Okay, so as a resident engineer, one of your duties is to monitor work progress. What I'm talking about here is the contractor has their program of works, which they did uh, at the beginning of the project as to when they will start certain operations, when they will finish, things like that. So when you monitor the work progress, you're just comparing what they're doing based on the program of works which they submitted to the engineer. So you will get to see where they are lagging behind and where they are lagging behind in certain operations, the contractor has to come up with a proposal as to how they're going to uh, catch up you know, with their program. And uh, sometimes there can be some hitches which were not foreseen as an engineer. You can also suggest um, something to the contractor, you know, that can work or that he can try out, but you have to be careful to make sure you make it very clear to the contractor that that does not um, actually remove the obligation from the contractor. And so you are free to make proposals, but make sure you don't take on any risk. So you monitor the work progress to make sure it's on time uh, as per the agreed schedule and then another thing is that you need to you need to write site instructions as the uh, resident engineer you're responsible for this uh, when the work started some things are unforeseen um, they can be buried things like rock or Sometimes you think maybe soft soil where you need to lay the pipe, you think maybe you'll bury it. And sometimes you meet rock and you have to lay the pipe on top. So all these things are variations to what was originally agreed. So as the engineer, you're supposed to write out the site instructions, uh, 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 highlighting what the contractor needs to do. And th those works, where the, how they're going to be paid, you know. Um, is, it, is it going to be from the BOQ or... A bill of quantities or it's going to be extra uh, funding that is going to be required for those works so you are responsible for coming up with those site instructions another another duty is to inspect inspect works the contractor is going to be made putting in reinforcement, uh, form work, um, excavation, setting out, everything like that. So you have to inspect at every level. When the contractor sets out, you need to inspect to make sure he has set out according to uh, the construction drawings. And when they do the excavations, is it the, the depth that was on the drawing, the concrete, is it the grade that has been agreed? Um, the reinforcement, the bars, are they the size which was agreed, the spacing, uh, form work, is it what has been agreed and is it done properly such that there's not going to be, you know, any bursting of the form work, you know, all things like that according to the drawing. Before the contractor moves to the next step, you need to make sure you inspect the works and, and you are really certain that it is based on the construction drawings. And then another thing is uh, you, you are responsible for setting out, 
setting up control procedures. What I mean here is that um, you have to come up with documents, be it a request for inspection, uh, for works or for equipment or material, um, request, you know, for concrete pour, request for inspection of reinforcement or for formwork. You know, when you come up with these control procedures, it just controls the contractor such that uh, you don't find them pouring concrete and you have no idea what reinforcement they used or how they tied up the reinforcement. So at every stage, you know, with your forms, you make sure the contractor puts in a request for inspection. You do the inspection and then on that request, approved or not approved. If it's not approved, you highlight what you didn't like, what they need to rectify or remedy. They remedy that. You go again for a re-inspection if it's okay, approved, then they can move on to the next stage. So as the engineer, you are responsible for making sure that your control documentation is in place. Then um, you need also to, you need to make sure the contractor is maintaining a daily diary. Diary. So here they just, um, on a daily basis, what equipment are they using? What equipment is working? What is not working? Workers, you know, their classes, who is on site? Uh, what is being done, you know, rainfall is also captured if, if works were stopped for a certain time. This just helps, you know, later on if there are certain claims that it, the contractor needs to do, you know, they can be based on now you go to the daily um, diary and, and compare with what he is actually claiming. If, they, if he says, oh, my equipment has been down for a month, you know, you can check from the daily uh, diary, it rained for a whole week. You can always check, uh, cross check with that information to make sure what the contractor is claiming is actually correct. And then uh, you need also to maintain, as the resident engineer, you need to maintain photographic, photographic records of the project so you just make sure you take pictures you know uh, right from the start their site and at every stage you take this uh, these uh, photographs because you're going to need them uh, also in your either monthly or quarterly reports you need to put in some at least photos of the works progress and even as uh, for the final project completion report you also need uh, all this photographic evidence, you know, so you need to make sure that that is in place. You have uh, your document, a soft copy, and don't, don't just keep everything on the camera. If something goes wrong, then yeah, you are in big, big trouble. So make sure you have uh, soft copies somewhere, hard drives and things like that, so that you have backup. Then um, you also need Okay, as the site engineer, you also send out a site meeting invitations. That's your duty. Um, you agree with the contractor when uh, you're having the site meeting, and then you send out the invitations to the client, the contractor, and um, highlighting the agenda of the meeting, when it will be, where, and uh, also in the meeting, you're supposed to, um, it's your responsibility to take minutes, which you will later on distribute uh, for signing by all the parties, by the client, contractor, and the engineer. So it is your duty to make sure you're capturing whatever's happening in the meeting, and then uh, tidy it up, come up with minutes for the meeting and have the parties sign. Then, um, okay, you also need to keep weather records. 
Okay. You keep weather records. Um, you can have a measuring device on site, or you can ha have a local uh, a weather station do uh, the recording for you, but you make sure you have whatever, if it is millimeters of rainfall, how much it was, when, you need to make sure you, you have all this information just in case the contractor wants to claim uh, for extension of time, you need to know exactly how many days um, he was affected so that you can accord him the extension. And then it's also your duty. You know, when you, uh, when you do these projects, uh, you are passing through communities. Some of them, you might be laying pipelines uh, that are passing through people's houses, people's, uh, people's yards, people's compounds, people's uh, fields. So there's also, there's bound to be conflict. You know, some people just maybe don't want you to pass the pipe through their yard. So here and there you hear of conflict out there on site between the contractor and the local people, you know, the contractor is insisting on passing the pipe. The local people are saying, if anyone passes through here, I'm going to use my panga on them. So as the engineer, you're supposed to smooth out these uh, conflicts. How you just do this? You have no mandate to actually decide what to do, but you can engage the client because the client is responsible. Uh, you make sure timelessly so that the project is not delayed for long. You engage the client to come, talk to their people. If there's compensation involved, then the client has to make sure they've compensated those people or whatever will have been discussed uh, before the project commencement. You know, uh, maybe something was discussed that the people, uh, the, uh, the land belongs maybe to the government, so no one is going to be given any money or that they're going to be given so much, uh, when and how. So all those things, uh, incorporating also the community leaders uh will come into play but as the engineer it's not your role to engage the community or to give or to speak uh, to the community that is the client's position but as the engineer you need to tenuously uh let the client know what is happening on the ground so that they move in to diffuse this conflict so that the project uh, moves on without further delays and um Yes, safety. That's also another thing. Safety. Of course, you'll have a safety guy on site who will be more on the ground. Uh, but you as the resident engineer has to make sure that people are work, working safely. Uh, they have to have the requisite protective clothing. If, if someone is welding, if someone is doing it, they need to have the protective goggles. Uh, the shoes, they have to have the proper shoes, um, gloves, if they're handling uh, things which can damage their hands, they need to have the gloves. And if they're uh, going up a high rise, uh, maybe scaffolding, they need to have those belts and they need to have the safety helmets, you know, things like that. So you need to make sure that your site is safe and that the contractor is uh, abiding by the safety rules as per as per the safety document that will have been drafted. And then you are responsible for relationships uh, within the working team. For me, I find that projects where there is that mutual respect, where you have mutual goal, to achieve that we want to make sure we deliver this project in time uh, where you know it, it, as the engineer or as the contractor you're there for a, a common purpose to make sure you deliver this project you know no one is an enemy of anybody you know on, on that project you don't need those negative vibes so you make sure you have um you build as much as possible that relationship whereby the, uh, the everything is in harmony between the contractor and the engineer and the client and the project everyone has the goal of making sure the project is completed on time and where the contractor has done work pay him you know because i know sometimes people want to 
really step on the contractor yet. But remember, he's a businessman. If he's done the work, pay him for the work, you know, and then you just make sure you maintain that relationship. Advise the client, because sometimes I know the client can come up with some wild suggestions. They have a budget like this and the shopping basket is like that. It happens. So it's your duty also to make sure you advise the client that, you know what, uh, I think this will be manageable based on what you have. Or if you want us to go through the whole shopping list, then we can maybe do part of this and this and have the client maybe select uh, what areas they want uh, to be completed in that phase. You know, so you are there also as the advisor. And remember, you're there to advise uh, both, you're there for the client and also for the contractor. Try not to take any sides. Then uh, you're also there communication. And when I talk of communication, here I'm talking of everything, emails, letters, um, even meetings, you know, so you're responsible for making sure you, you've communicated with the contractor based on what he needs to know, what he needs to do. And equally, you are also in communication with the clients to inform them, you know, of project progress or hitches or anything that you might require uh, the, uh, the client to do or just for information as to the status of the project. So you are there also as the resident engineer to make sure you manage this communication, to make sure everyone is on the same page, everyone knows where the, uh, the project is, uh, everyone knows what roles uh, they're supposed to play, if there's a hitch, who needs to do what and by when, you know, things like that. So it's also your duty to manage the communication. So for the first phase, for the first part, I think I will end there. Make sure you watch the second part as I complete um, the duties. And I hope you will be equipped and confident. Enjoy your week. Why, why, why?